Good morning, everyone. On this rainy Wednesday morning, we give thanks to God for a new day, for good news that we receive, and for God's presence in the hard times, too. So let's gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you'd keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. We have our daily grace because we need it every day, right? And today is October 20th. So our writer today is Matt McGill. And our scripture is Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. They have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. Michael Jackson's thriller provides endlessly useful imagery for describing how we love the law. Darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. We creep toward regulations and lurch toward instruction. Although we know that the law kills, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, we worship it anyway. Functionally referring a weekend at Bernie Zombie's life, we say things like, God helps those who help themselves, or Jesus is my co-pilot. Cue drooling, heavy mouth breathing, and limbs occasionally falling off. Our creep show selves come out. Paradoxically, that is what happens when we seek to display proper and lawful behavior intended to ingratiate ourselves to a God who has already forgiven us in Christ. It turns out that our desire for rules, as it has always been, is rooted in unbelief. You know that that guy St. Paul tells us we're tied to, verse 20, the law is bloodthirsty for a life, and we don't believe it is already ours in Christ. What a world, what a world. To the Colossian walking dead, Paul shouts, get back in the grave. And where the power is, not in the works of your hands, but in the hands that were pierced for all the night walking, law loving, but rarely law abiding transgressors like you and me. According to the letter of the law, the old kingdom produces only death, but an upside down rapture has occurred in Christ. Love lifted me down into a grave. Shocking zombies everywhere for over 2,000 years. It turns out that it is only the cross of Christ that delivers us real life. Abducted from the kingdom of obligation, we are ushered by King Jesus, who is literally the embodiment of love and acceptance, into the new and forever kingdom of his life. So, well, Hollywood inappropriate, I guess, but... um, for one thing, I don't know what version of this Colossians text is. It seems really a different version than we're used to reading. But all the, all the rules and regulations um, and how the, the law can hem us in and also make us feel self-righteous, that we are um, holier, that we are um, more worthwhile, that we are more valuable to society, to whatever, to God, it's saying too. We're more valuable to God when we follow the rules, that we are, um, that the law somehow is 
still necessary even after Christ? And this is a hard one where the law is. Because I mean, it's always one of those things where we see out there in the world and we see the brokenness and we see what our lawlessness or our um, law lovingness does. That, um, and I'd be curious to know some of your thoughts on this too, of course, of as we put more laws in the books, one thing that, that Luther and our, some of our theology talks us is what one thing the law does is it reveals sin. It shows us how we have it, we are falling short by needing to name the fact that what we're doing is incorrect or harmful or needs to be restrained. That is actually exposing the fact that we are sinful, that we have fallen short, that we need that new boundary. Um, and so in, in one sense, the law reveals our need, neediness and our brokenness, um, amplifying what our, need, our, um, our depravity. So thinking about um, thriller, I have to listen to the words. I guess I've always just paid attention to the dance and the weirdness of it. Um, Darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all your neighborhood. Um, and this, this view of darkness trying to get us and trying to terrorize us is, I think, that creepy fear as well of death fear of pain and suffering. And we sometimes put the law up also to try to push back that darkness, to push back that fear, to try to protect ourselves. I mean, in the beginning of the pandemic, we did that where we kind of closed in ourselves into our the walls of our houses and stepping out could be easily death, right? Anything that came into our house could mean death to us. Um, and we were, as we were aware of the dangers and the veil of self-security was taken away from us, it revealed just how dangerous life can be. And then after a while, you, you live with risk and you, you see where what's riskier behaviors and what are the risks you're willing to take. Um, and your world begins to get a little bit bigger again. That doesn't mean that death isn't potentially lurking, but not necessarily. Um, how do we live that balance of law, which reveals, but also gives boundaries um, and grace and God's provision? He's also alluding to in here some of the, you know, God helps those who help themselves, blah, blah, blah. Jesus is my co-pilot. Um, Jesus takes the wheel. I'm giving you permission for the next, you know, while well, I take a nap that you can have a little bit of control. I mean, our, our it's false, right? It's that's not necessarily Jesus's role in our life. Um, it's not a law to keep us in the middle of the road or between the lane um, to guide us in that way of like this, go on the law abiding path of, of um, security for yourself. Um, the one thing we do talk about, I mean, this is one thing we don't like is the walking dead, the um, get back in the grave. Um, let's struggle with that a little bit. I mean, one time, one thing they teach us as, as pastors is looking out and realizing that everybody out there is dying. Everybody out in the congregation is somebody who has their feet in the grave already. Um, so if you if you preach as if they're already dead and you're giving them the word of life, very different than they are alive and they need to be restrained and pulled to. Um, to come into line again. So am I trying to kill you? Or am I trying to bring you back to life? And really not me, the word, their best. Sometimes, sometimes pastors mix that up and um, think it's our job to make people either <laughs> die or come to life again. But it's a little bit curious here about how Paul talks about getting back in the grave. And it, I don't think it means necessarily that um, what we can, what this author means and what we, we can interpret it however we want really, right? Um, that you are as good as dead as far as your good works go. Um, you have nothing to contribute to your salvation. You are like a corpse in that sense. I mean, and it, it's very organic imagery, but you are, um, when you're dead, you have nothing to contribute, right? Other than grief for the world and your family members. 
but that image is one and therefore that and Christ does everything then. Christ is the one that brings a word into your dead body, into your dead life, and brings life to you into the grave, um, gets down in the dirt with you and pulls you into life again, um, giving you grace and mercy. Um, so we, and also the fact that it's not about escaping the grave, which we a lot of times spend our whole lives doing. It's about going through that grave into life. The, the big death of our baptisms, the little death of our, of our bodies when we do die and then are risen to new life. But then there's a daily death and, that death and resurrection that we live as well. So it's rather, it's not about obligation. It's not about what are we contributing, but it's literally what God brings to us every morning and every day of our life, bringing life into our zombies that we are, bringing life into our, um, well, maybe we, are, we act as zombies sometimes too, you know, just the, the focusing on one thing rather than on all the good things that God is doing in our life. We focus on, well, if you were zombies, I, isn't it, don't they eat human brains? I don't even, I'm not a big zombie movie person. But what do we, are hyper-focused on that law or our sin or somebody else's sin and we just get our vision narrowed like a zombie to where they are infected to go to, I guess. We are infected by that law, um, that need, that sin. And what God does is pushes us into the grave and then resurrects us from it. Curious imagery, isn't it? Um, curious how God works. Offensive, but also one that literally brings us life. Breathe in and out and remember what our Lord says. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for your ability to take us from death into life, to breathe your breath of forgiveness and provision into our life. And we thank you for the law. And we also recognize that it amplifies sin and also hems us in. Help us to discern that its role in our lives and the limits that it has also over our lives. Um, and to cling to your grace for us and for our neighbors. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray for successful surgeries yesterday. We pray for upcoming baptisms in two weeks. We pray for um, ongoing treatment and, and worry about um, cognitive needs, physical limitations, our heart and, and head space right now of of all the struggles that we have and how much just basic things can be hard right now. And we ask for your healing in that, um, for you to hold our grief of the loss of normal and the weariness that some of us are, well, all of us in our own ways, I'd say, that um, are feeling. And we ask that your forgiveness and your new life come the gifts of relationship with others, Lord, continue to work us um, into the, the body of Christ that you'd have us be and to provide for our, our need and so that we can care for one another. When we are zombie-like and fixated, um, move our, our eyes to and our direction where it needs to go and console us with your grace the communion of faith in your church, Lord, we do ask that you continue to give us your hope in this time of paradox and juxtaposition of 
wanting to gather or being in different um, routines and resisting, resisting adding things, resisting um, making decisions, resisting um, participating and contributing. Um, call us into what needs to be done so that we can be that commun have that communion of faith and reach out in new and wondrous ways to our community. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for our branches of government and the work that is before them. We pray for Governor Inslee. We pray for those ballots that have come in the mail here in Washington as we, we vote. May um, there be hope in that voting. And may you also be with the leaders throughout the world as they struggle, as they, they endure, as they try, as they fail. And um, out of our weariness, create hope for people in countries ravaged by strife, warfare, or COVID-19. Lord, we are in a, a strange time and beset upon by so many different forces. So as we, we look towards our daily bread, we ask that you provide it for us and for our neighbors and for our enemies. For all who work for peace and international harmony, Lord, we remember this every day and it seems so big and it seems so impossible or sometimes it feels hopeful. Wherever we are thinking about peace and harmony, both nationally, internationally, and we focus on that it's work and we're weary. Call us into the work that you would have us do, Lord. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, remind us that you're the one that saves, but that we are also called to be stewards. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, continue to um, do your thing, to gather us in, to open our ears, to claim our hearts, and to send us out into the world. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.